Alright, alright, alright. Welcome back to Birdman Drug Stories. Got thrown the Birdman custom tea for a drug story above the custom painting on the left and my custom candles on the right. Rest in peace, Johnny Lebrec, Corey Harrington, my gone friends from drug overdoses. Rest in peace. I love you guys. And we'll get into the good shit, which is the drug stories. And we have a special edition drug story for his Labor Day weekend. Now, Labor Day, back in my hometown of Ludlow, Mass, they have this thing called the Festa, which is a big, giant Portuguese festival. They have, like, these Portuguese celebrities that are there, like, you know, this uh, famous singers and famous uh, artists and singers from Portugal that come. And it's a big fest. People come from all over. There's thousands and thousands of people that go there. I used to always have family come to my mom's house during the Festa weekend. And Festa weekend was when the shenanigans pop off. For example, if you got beef with someone throughout the year, chances are you're going to catch them at Festa. Um, if you got someone that, that you, you got beef with and you might have to fight them, well, if you go to Festa, you better be ready to fucking throw down and fight them. Even if you don't got beef with them, some beef could pop off at any time. Festa is notorious for fights, fist fights, uh, even, even some stabbings and, and such. But uh, today's drug story, man, basically you get in a fight almost every year. You're going to have to get into a fight back in the day. They're not having it this year because of COVID-19, like everything else in the fucking world. Uh, so we're going to hop in the time machine today, go back to a little compilation of Birdman drug stories for Festa weekend, which is Labor Day weekend in Ludlow, Mass. We're all earth and it goes down. If you got beef, you better be ready to throw it out. So... We're going to hop in the time machine on this one. I've gotten in multiple fights, Festa weekend, lost more than I've won, to be honest. You can see, you know, I'm not scary to fight, and I can fight, but I was never the biggest, strongest dude, so I took some L's Festa weekend. I know it's not shocking, but I took some L's. I did get I did get one win uh, Festa weekend on a heads-up fight, so we're going to hop in the time machine and go to that one glorious victory that I had, um, as opposed to the other, like, seven losses or defeats. Now, I had beef with this kid, and this kid is in one of my drug stories as that time where I bamboozled everybody, where I had a grow house for this fake story, entertainment purposes only. And uh, so we had beef after that. And then not only after that, when I kind of robbed the drug house for all the money and all the plants and everything, I, I basically robbed everybody for it. And uh, what happened then was I had beef with this kid. And he's like a little short, like a midget gangster. Now, was, he has an older brother who had like done lots of state time. So we'd always kind of be like, my brother, my brother. And then me and his brother became friends when he got out of jail after doing, I think it was something like maybe 10 years. It was a long amount of time. And we were all cool. Uh, but then me and his little brother, the little midget gangster, he fucking... He had beef with me because of the grow house stunt that I pulled, you know, tricking everybody, uh, tricking him and our buddy, the uh, the dirt stash. I, I fooled them all and robbed them all. And it was fucked up because I was friends with these kids more so uh, the dirt stash, me and him. We were like best friends for a long time growing up for dirt stash. But um, the midget kid, we were cool and we had some fun times, partying days and whatnot. But, you know, when I got over on everybody, we had some serious beef. I wasn't worried about the kids like fucking four foot 11, like scrawny as I am, just fucking tiny. <laughs> uh, so what happened was after that, he had beef with me. Now, I was getting ready to go out to Festus one night. This was, I would think, of right around 2012-ish, maybe 2011. Now, I had beef with him, but it was nothing I was really worried about. So I went. And I actually got some, uh, like an eight ball fronted from one of my other boys. And he fronted me an eight ball and bagged it all up. I had a bunch of 40 bags that were, you know, packaged up and ready to go sell at Festa. It's a good place to sell drugs because everybody's there is getting drunk and everybody's trying to basically do, do coke or take ecstasy, mostly cocaine. All the Portuguese folks really love the cocaine up there. I was no different. And uh, so I bagged up a bunch of, a bunch of coke, not a bunch of eight ball, not even that much, but I bagged it all up and I went there to go sell it and have a good old time. Go, They have like a beer tent up there and the beer tent is where the fights always go down. And I went up there at all, I had like a button up shirt, you know, like a dress shirt buttoned up, you know, my flyest, freshest button up shirt. And I had the pocket in it basically filled up with the eight ball of bagged up 40 bags. I went up into, into the beer tent area. I think I had like just got in there. We were pre-gaming before drinking and stuff, getting drunk before we went there. But when I went up there, 
I went up through the little coke bags up in my pocket. And when I went up there, I fucking, um, I didn't even, I didn't even see the kid. He's like fucking probably cause I'm like six feet tall and he's like four foot 11. So he wasn't in my, my sight line of visions. Sorry, someone messaged me. I was in my was not in my sight line of visions because he's fucking like four foot eleven. I'm six feet tall, so I didn't even see him. I'm up there. I was just like chit chatting with somebody, and we had had beef. And he was mad too because there was some girl that he was like fucking like in love with. He was trying to date her, and things were going too good with them. So I freaking I was single at the time, so I fucking slid in there, you know. And when I slid in there, all you needed to do to get this hoe on your side was have some cocaine. Now, like I mentioned, I got myself an eight ball, so. Uh, he got upset cause I stayed there a couple, a couple of nights that weekend at like her apartment and he was all heartbroken and bent out of shape about it. Plus I had robbed him for the whole grow house thing for like thousands and thousands of dollars. So we had a beef coming and it got settled on this day. So I went up into the beer tent. Sorry, grabbed my coffee. As I went up into the beer tent. I was chit chatting with someone. I forget who I was even talking to. But I was like chit chatting with someone. I was obviously high. I was sniffing the coke. I was trying to sell. It was shocking, I know. And uh, I was up there getting drunk. And as soon as I get, get up there, fucking out of nowhere, I just fucking boom, yo, I got fucking hit. I don't know where I'm sitting chit chatting with someone. Out of nowhere, I get fucking, I'm not going to say rocked. I got like a pesky little fly punch hit at me out of nowhere. And it was this fucking little short midget kid that I robbed. And I like looked down like motherfucker. And he's like all getting all gangster on me. And I was like, fuck, I was on probation at the time. Pocket full of coke. And there's cops everywhere up there. You know, they're looking for fights because they know fights are going down. And they're trying to they'll arrest you right there real quick. So I didn't like I didn't like fight back. I didn't swing back on him because I had a bunch of bagged up coke in my pocket like a fucking dumbass. But I wanted to keep it on me in case I want to do something. I don't want to walk all the way to the car and back and all that shit. So I had all, all the shit on me. This kid sucker punches me out of fucking nowhere, um, which didn't really hurt that bad. It was like a little fly, but he did catch me like in the eye out of nowhere. I was fucking pissed, but I couldn't I couldn't hit him back. I didn't want to fight back because I didn't want to get uh, arrested. But I did want it at this point. Now I'm now he sucker punched me. Now I'm wanting to fight too. Fuck that. So he fucking got me. With the sucker punch, and I was like, yo, I was like, I'm fighting right here only because I want to get arrested. I'll fuck you up. So we're talking shit back and forth. And then one of our mutual friends came by, and one of my best friends, and he lives right by him and his girl and his kid live right by where the festival is, like the next street over. So he goes, I was like, I'll fuck him up. I don't want to get arrested. So he's like, you can come to my my house and to the backyard and you guys can fight there. And I was like, we we're both like, yeah, let's do it. So it was the funniest shit because like everybody kind of saw what happened up in the beer tent. And then they saw the altercation after. Then they saw my boy saying that we could fight in his backyard. So basically, like, the whole beer tent, like, halfway cleared out. And everybody was walking like it. Like, back in high school, we get a fight. Like, There's going to be a fight after school at the basketball courts. And, like, everybody rallies up and, like, walks towards a fight to watch it. This shit was going down. It was, like, it was almost like a movie, like a, like the 300 movie or something, where it, just, it was me walking with a bunch of people behind me. Just there to watch the fight. They weren't like there to like have my back. They're just there to watch the watch the chaos. And the same thing with him. He had a bunch of friends want to watch chaos. Now his fucking older brother that I told you about, um, the one that had done state time. Now he's a bit. He's a big dude. Um, not anyone I'd want to fight certainly. And I was scared that he was also going to watch fun. He's like, all right, you guys need to handle this. You guys need to handle this. Just go fight on the heads up. And I basically told his brother, I was like, yo, I'm like, we got beef. I was like, I'll f- like, we'll fight, but I don't want no problem with you really. And uh, he said, nah, I promise I won't jump in. I promise I won't jump in. You guys can handle it. You know, whoever wins, wins, you know, just fight like men and shake hands after. I was like, all right. Uh, so he told me, and he gave me his word that he wouldn't jump in or like, or like fuck me up if I was winning or anything like that. And I'll give him that. He did stick to his word. He didn't jump in, even though he watched his little brother uh, get beat up. So we walked back to my boy's backyard. Like I said, we got the 300 people behind us like, fight, 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 fight. And then fucking we're walking there. I got the adrenaline going crazy. I'm all coked out because I was you know, obviously sniffing the shit and I should have been selling. Here's a spoiler alert. I'm pretty sure I didn't sell any of the coke and I did it all. That's a recurring theme on my drug stories every time I tried selling coke, especially on a festival weekend. No profit was made and a debt was run. So we go there in the backyard. My friend's girlfriend, who was his kid's mom, she was 
she was like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And my boy was like, my boy uh, was like, was like, oh, they're going to fight in the backyard, honey. It's okay. And she's like, are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? You're going to have them fight in the backyard? And she's like, yeah, they don't want to get in trouble. So, you know, they got beef. We're going to let them fight it out. Because he was like friends with everybody, with both of us. So it was cool. So we went back there and I'm fucking coked up, raged up. And he sucker punches. I'm fucking pissed. I'm usually a pretty low key guy. I don't get so mad. But I was mad because he sucker punched me in the fucking beer tent. I couldn't hit him back because I had all the coke in my pocket. So he gets back there and like he's talking all this shit and we got we got going immediately comes at me. I fucking hit him a couple times. He came at me. I was able to fucking when he went at me, he's such a smaller kid and I'm not big either, but I'm at least like somewhat taller or normal tall height, six feet. And this kid's a little, a little scrawny midget. And he fucking came over and I fucking did like a fucking hip toss on him where I fucking grabbed him. I fucking rocked him off of my friend's girlfriend's car she had like a gold maxima so i fucking like turned and like fucking hip checked him flung him smashed him off the car when he came up off the car he went back at me boom i hit him i get him down now we're on top of like the concrete as we're on top of the concrete i got him down i got the dominant position hanging over him i'm fucking like choking this dude like just choking him out choking him out and i was fucking his head was up above the fucking cement as his head's up above the cement i'm trying to like rock his head into the cement and then one of our mutual friends the dirt stash came by and fucking broke it up he's like no no, you can't do that you're gonna fucking kill the kid he can't be smashing his head into the concrete bro you guys are you guys were friends blah 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 and and so like they kind of broke it up and restarted the fight we restart the fight again and and i i don't think i've even got hit at all but by by the restart of the fight now i'm like pretty tired too and you know we fought it out some more and and the fight goes and ends and this was like my first ever festa weekend winning fight of all time now mind you i was a good like zero and six heading into it. i never won a festa fight before because usually i get so fucking hammered and not know what's going on and just get rocked but this one i finally got my first w i got my first win and when they broke when they broke the fight up after fucking i went to go shake his hand after a fight like all right man you fought me on the heads up whatever and like he was so like ashamed and embarrassed that fucking that i not only basically took his girl at the time that i also fucking won the fight after he sucker punched me walked down there and i, I got the win off him on the fight and he went to shake my hand after he was so like depressed and demoralized because he was always like talking tough he was like little man syndrome where he's like i'll fucking i'll fuck up whoever but it's like really you're not gonna fuck up anybody like come on have you looked in the mirror have you have you checked how tall you are and how much you weigh? Okay, you're fucking tiny. You're not a gangster. But he thought he was like some crazy gangster. And then when he lost the fight to the little old bird, man, then fucking all of a sudden his gangsterism, whatever fake gangsterism was left, was whew, gone out the window. So he was embarrassed. He wouldn't even shake my hand. He had his head down and like walked off into the night. I then proceeded to go and basically to that girl that he was talking to his house and just went there and basically did all the coke with her for free. I got bamboozled. She was just like a coke call. If he had a coke, she would hang out. I'm pretty sure that like they hung out when he had some and like she fucked up his re-up by them getting high. And uh, I went over there that night after fight and fucking uh, sniffed up all, all my coke with this fucking like, dirt bag trailer trash type bitch anyways. And she would buy the festival also. Um, so that was that was my first win that I had on festival weekend. Now, if you're going to go way back in the time machine right now, we're going to hop in way back. The first time I ever smoked weed was actually at the Portuguese Festival. Now, we were young. We were in junior high school, me and two of my friends, and they had somehow gotten some like Buddha brown dirt weed, some trash weed. It was like all sticks, all seeds, no actual weed, but we we're fucking basically kids. We were kids. I didn't even know how to roll a joint. I didn't know nothing. I'd never even smoked before. But we had been drinking, so I was like, all right, yeah, I'll smoke pot with you guys. And uh, we had nothing to roll it with, and we were too young to get uh, a cigar or papers or anything like that. So what we did was we took a CVS receipt. I'll never forget a CVS, like the pharmacy. We grabbed one of the receipts, and we rolled the dirt swag weed up in the fucking CVS receipt. There's three of us. We each hit it like two times. We were like, oh, fuck. We were fucking rocked off a of dirt weed out of a CVS receipt. It was fucking wild. And that was the first time I ever smoked weed was at this festival. Um, I remember when I first started uh, getting into the drug game, when I started hanging it, hanging out with um, like the more criminal type kids and good friends of mine. But they were like in and out of jail their whole youth before I had ever even come close to going to jail. And these kids were like tough jailbirds, basically. When I first started hanging out with them, getting into the drug game and selling drugs and shit like that, um, 
you know, I felt like I was really cool. It's that it, it's what I wanted to be when I was, you know, young in my late teens, early twenties. I want to be a Coke dealer. I want to be an ecstasy dealer and just hanging out with these, with these jailbird type kids who are, who are good people. And none of them do the shit they used to do. Everybody grew up. I was the last one to grow up really. Um, I felt really cool just being associated with them because they were like the toughest kids in the town I'm from. So me hanging out with them was like, wow, I'm finally like hanging out with like the tough crew. No one can really fuck with me. And I I fucking love that shit. I wore like a badge of honor. We'd all have our Sean John stuff on. My boy would have his black Sean John jumpsuit that he like would let let me borrow for like the festival weekend so I could look look cool and gangster with them too. It's all like fake gangster shit back then. But that's what I wanted to be. And, you know, fucking life is just crazy. And when I started hanging out with these kids, Kids. I remember I was selling ecstasy one time. We went up to that beer tent, and this is like time machine would be like 2006, 2005, way back in the time machine for that one. And we went, we went there. I was selling ecstasy pills. I went up to a beer tent, and someone's like, "Hey, someone in the beer tent wants ecstasy pills." And I had gotten like a ten pack of ecstasy pills, like I'm fucking Johnny Tapia from Bad Boys Two with my little ten pack. Fucking immediately ate three of them, had seven left to sell. I was like, "I'm gonna be the." ecstasy kingpin of the world i went i went up there to sell them and fucking i was like who wants it who wants it and they're like pointed and everyone's like that guy so that guy said he, his boy wanted it so i'm like going down the chain of events to find out who actually wants the ecstasy pills and i was like charging like 20 dollars a piece for him and i looked up it's my older cousin rest in peace he passed away to an overdose about a year ago maybe two years ago um and he was like older cousin I used to look up to and he saw me hanging out with like the like badass criminal crew and he's like he's like you have the ecstasy pills I'm like looking at him I'm like a rolling face I'm like yeah I was like do you have any techno <laughs> like, yeah I got him he's like how much like $20 a piece he's like really I'm like yeah so I like, sold him a couple ecstasy pills and I thought I was the fucking drug kingpin of them all because I sold my older cousin who I used to look up to um some e pills. I thought I was like the super hero of the festival with my Sean John and Anichi gear on, selling them a couple e pills. And these times always got fucking wild. You know, selling ecstasy, not going to sleep, sniffing coke, not going to sleep. These were the party days, but these were the party days before shit got real, before opiates, before Percocets, before heroin. This is when, um, is when I really just wanted to like be a drug dealer and with party drugs, ecstasy, cocaine. I'd never even seen heroin or Percocet back then. It wasn't out like that. Um, but as you grow up, I realized, you know, I was looking up, I wanted to be the wrong thing and they all kind of cleaned up their act and like became, you know, citizens. And then like, I did not clean up my act and became a fucking dope fiend. Now I recovered dope fiend. Um, I just look back to all these times and it's mind blown to the goals that I wanted to have. My goal is to like sell 10 ecstasy pills. Like that's a lot or something or sell an eight ball. And I never successfully even sold shit. I'll usually just do all the drugs, have a debt, end up dodging whoever I owe the money to. But that's uh, that's going to be today's Birdman Drug Stories. In honor of Festa 2020 is canceled. Festa 2020 is canceled. Everything's canceled. So today you got Birdman's Drug Story in the Time Machine. They got these fucking beef sandwiches called Bifanas. I wish I could have a Bifana right now with the fucking festivals canceled. But Birdman Drug Story is not canceled. We are here and in action. Don't forget... Hit the like and subscribe button to your friend the Birdman and his Birdman drug stories. Birdman out. Rest in peace, Festa.